It's easy to hear your favorite artist on WFPK from wherever you are. Listen on your smart speaker, live stream from our website at WFPK.org from Louisville Public Media. Oh, I don't think I'm very camera ready. I'm in bed. (laughs) Consequence Podcast Network. Hey, welcome to another edition of Kyle Meredith with the interview series presented by WFPK at WFPK.org, Consequence, and the Consequence Podcast Network. Thanks, as always, for uh, making your way here and checking out the episode. Hopefully, you subscribe to the series because I put out three new interviews every single week. It's a new one every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday to keep you up to date on your favorite artists, discover some new ones, know what's happening in the music world at iTunes, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Acast, Podchaser, NPR, YouTube for the video versions, or anywhere you like to get your podcast from. Again, I'm Kyle Meredith. Today, I'm going to be talking uh, with Courtney Barnett. We have caught up in a couple years. This time, it's about her newest record, Things Take Time, Take Time. The Australian uh, singer-songwriter going to be discussing well, how the pandemic limited her uh, musical resources, noticing the way people communicated during the lockdown, and doing a bulk of her writing from the bed, which uh, I, I do believe is her favorite place, as she'll say. Uh, Courtney's also going to get into some of the guitar moments on the record, which I uh, always love, uh, having a theme of writing letters to other people, and covering the Velvet Underground's I'll Be Your Mirror as well for that latest uh, tribute series. So let's do it. Things take time, take time. It's Kyle Meredith with Courtney Barnett. Hi, how are you? Things take time, take time. It's another great record, what you're doing. So what I noticed about right away, you know, listening to it the first few times, I love the way it sort of begins and and ends and and how it, okay, I'm saying very obvious things and how it flows in the middle too. But the album starts with you waking up and literally ends with you back in bed. (laughs) Like, did you see the LP playing out in like a grand story in that way? Yeah, that's such a good observation. I didn't, I did not really planned that but then I remember having a moment where I I did realize that maybe kind of as I was doing the play the playlisting or the um I mean the track listing um but yeah it's it's funny (laughs) it's funny how it ended up like that I think the the you and bed and sleep uh ends up in quite a few songs if I remember right soon you'll be in bed uh that line too uh and and uh, you might be from your bed right now, I think is what you're saying. Um, might I guess that this is like, my wife would say that's her favorite spot. Is that is that okay? Is that, would that be yours? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I think so. I mean, it's definitely, yeah, it's like, a, um, it's like just peaceful. It's peaceful and calming. And uh, I do, I guess I, I, I end up doing a lot of like, you know, writing while I'm lying in bed or listening to music or reading or whatever it is. I, I, somehow I end up spending a lot of time in bed and I guess, you know, the, the, around the time of making the album, it was kind of, uh, I was in a a lot of the time uh, I was in Melbourne lockdown and in, in a, in a small flat by myself. And it was kind of, you know, the cycle of the days and the, the morning and the night. And it's quite repetitive kind of, you know daily motions so yeah so it almost becomes a little bit of the character uh within mm. the songs yeah um, and like i said it's it's really fun to kind of hear how because you know a lot of artists whether they chose to lean into the pandemic further pandemic record if you want to call it that i think that's what it'll be called in history anyway but uh, or not but you know it, five years from now i don't know that it's going to be obvious for you because this record you know, it, it isn't exactly about that. It is, a, I, I'm assuming the life you led during that, but it didn't, like, did, was that part of your thought? Did you want that to be represented in the record? Yeah, I think, I think it creeps in there and it's definitely, I mean, it's, it's part of it without being the whole thing, if that makes sense. Like, I guess it, yeah, I, I certainly didn't want it to be the, uh, the focus, but also how can you deny, you know, what's going on around you? <laughs> um it it's it's an important part of the of the um you know the backdrop and the kind of emotion behind a lot of the a lot of the songs yeah I think in another interview maybe you had said it's an album of patience was, mm. was that what you were referring to 
Yeah, certainly. Um, yeah, I think it was a real, it was a lesson in patience, I think. Um, and it was, um, yeah, I think that's a good way to, a good way to put it. There's another moment in here, and I'm almost surprised how quick the moment comes and goes and has such an impact. And, and it's, it's in Ray Street. It's the uh, all our candles, hopes, and prayers don't mean a thing line. Because what that means to me in the wider scope of what was happening in the world was so much, almost as big a part of the story as the pandemic was in the past few years. And, and you just hit it in that one single line right there. And I, I was just kind of curious if that was what you were kind of getting at, if that's what that line represents, how did you want to address that? Yeah, I guess, you know, it, the, the greatest thing about writing sometimes is, um, and I probably, I, I tried to kind of, um, it was probably a more conscious effort to, um, you know, to simplify some ideas and to kind of leave some elements, um, you know, up for interpretation. I think I, I normally kind of feel like I have to explain everything or try to explain exactly how I'm feeling. And a lot of the time, um, I think things can be more powerful when you, um, I don't know, when, when people kind of interpret things in different ways and even a line like that you know I mean it <laughs> it it seems to me like pretty um straightforward but also it means different things at different at different times so I kind of I, I kind of like that each individual person is going to um is going to maybe hear that in a slightly different way you know uh, there are artists who will take a full album to say what you did in that one little line right there that's <laughs> uh <laughs> Well, and, and you've, you know, you follow that with, but we've got a long, long way to go, um, which is just perfect. I don't have a question for that. It's just, <laughs> I really connected with that one anyway. Mm. Further on down, and I do want to hit some of the music too, like uh, Sunfair Sundown. And you, 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 I don't know, you probably maybe used drum machines before, but I don't know. It stood out this time in a way because I know a lot of folks because of what we're, um, you know, creating albums over zoom and anything were you did that limit you in in what you were doing musically um you know not just automatically maybe having a live band at your whim yeah it it definitely um it it changed everything you know a little bit and it was kind of adapting to um to circumstance and and all of that stuff but um but I think sometimes you know sometimes it's kind of interesting to have parameters because then you um you have to like work within them and whether it's you know people or the amount of people in a studio or distance or or lack of instruments or whatever it is it um I think it it just creates kind of uh, an opportunity for creativity um so yeah it was it was it was a different a whole lot of different kind of processes but um but I think in that in the end it it allowed for more kind of um, experimentation. And well, I mean, some of my favorite albums, I, I always kind of jokingly say my favorite albums are the sophomore albums because that's when the artist back is really up against a wall. But <laughs> for, for the reasons you're saying right now, because, you know, for, for whatever the reason is, you know, to, to, to be forced into creativity, uh, to experimentation. Like as a producer of music, though, oh, the flip side of that, you know, was there ever that point where you're going, oh, I wish I could take this song in this direction, but, you know, I can't for whatever reason. Like, is that part of it? I think, I'm not sure. I think, you know, when, when, you, when you kind of decide that there's rules, then maybe that's when there's, when it becomes hard and there's, you know, then, then, you, then you hit the, the wall easier. Um, I think when you kind of take those rules away and the kind of um, expectations of what you're making or like the result, I think it was good for me to think more about the process than the end result um, because it didn't, it didn't let me, it didn't allow myself to kind of get, get caught up as much thinking about it. Well, were, did you have, if you started to get an idea of where you were going lyrically, did you have a musical direction in mind? Like I'll point out, I love 
what you're doing on the guitar on here's the thing that the dream quality mm. that that pushes forward oh yeah yeah i um i was so happy the day i the day i came up with that guitar line um i think i was i'm pretty sure i was sitting watching tv and i just i feel like i constantly had a guitar in my hand and that line just came out of nowhere and um yeah there's something about that subconscious cre like subconscious creativity that you have to kind of trust and and go with but um yeah and I think it that creates the space for the for the lyric or for the melody it kind of you know one leads the other it it kind of yeah makes that dreamlike space or that kind of repetition yeah and again it just complimented yeah the lyrics just so well uh in that and and throughout the record Th those lyrics there is um a, a bit of a letter theme and you've talked about that a little bit before too when did you notice that that was becoming such a prominent part of the record I think sometimes you know as I as I kind of slowly collect songs and ideas and some in, in the moment sometimes I don't notice because the a similar idea you know might jump from song to song and or you know I might I, I might try to um mix and match where a where a lyric fits it might it might jump between songs and so sometimes I don't notice until you know months later and I look back and listen to everything or read through and I and I see these themes that pop up jump out at me but I think you know and sometimes I I try to not you know say the same things or include the same lines or the same the same kind of um I don't know the same actions from song to song but but I think sometimes it um I don't know it's just the way it's just the way it happens and we've got to allow it maybe well I mean I guess it makes sense that there seems to be a lot of missing um like a constant bit of separation between the narrator and, and the subjects yeah I don't know it, there's something it paints a picture as well like I think as well like seeing it more as a um as like a creative you know it, it, a letter I think just seeing like the, the concept of writing a letter or sending a letter or receiving a letter as a kind of umbrella for communication in general I guess a letter could could be a text or a phone call or um a conversation but um it paints a better picture to um to kind of portray it as a a letter sailing through the air. <laughs> yeah. I got a real letter in the mail the other day and it blew my mind just from a friend <laughs> who could have just seen me out at any point. It <laughs> was so yeah. it took me back like 20 years at least. It was um fun. Oh, I love I love real letters. There's there's something really special about them. Do you still write them? Do you get them? Do, I mean, do you have a friend group yeah. that, that still does letters? Yeah, I, I've i got um, yeah, a bunch of people in my life that um, write letters or postcards or, yeah. It's definitely made me kind of rethink about putting that back into my life. There, By the way, there was another moment I was going to bring up just out of the ordinary of my normal day that seems to take place in yours. And that was back in Ray Street. And I thought... The most surprising thing about that song is how many people are being active outside, not just inside watching TV. Like mm. I there's I don't know, there's a hundred houses on my street. And if I went out right now, I probably wouldn't see anyone outside, honestly. Mm. <laughs> it's a nice uh I mean that I loved I, I guess I walked more than usual around around my neighborhood, especially while I was making this album and Melbourne was in a lot of lockdown, so all I could really do was was walk around, and um, it was nice to just have these like new interactions with people, and I feel like people communicated on a different level during that time as well, because everything right. else was kind of taken taken away, or you know, um, everything was just kind of expressing itself in different ways. Well, I, I do love the way you paint it uh, within your lyrics, and I don't know if you, you, you know. It, there'll be a lot of interviewers who ask an artist like, Oh, do you have a favorite song on the record? And that's always kind of a weird, I mean, sometimes maybe you do, mm -hmm. but, but I, I started wondering about the lyrics themselves, like take it day by day. Of course, it's just so great to hear you sing, don't stick that knife in the toaster. <laughs> and like, do you find that you have a lyrics or, or, or lyrics on here that you're like extra proud of at least? 
Yeah, definitely. I think there's some, yeah, there's definitely um, some, some ones I'm very proud of. <laughs> ones that stick out more than the others. Yeah. I mean, definitely. I mean, the whole album in general, I think I'm just so proud of and, but yeah, there's certain lyrics that is it probably on, here's the thing. There's the, um, yeah, I don't know. It's hard, it's hard to, 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 to pick them out, but there's some, there's some special ones. Well, uh, again, I'm, I'm always a big fan, um, and I could go on. I mean, Turn Green and just the way it sort of explodes and, and feels like that could be one of those big live moments, too. And Oh, by the way, um, you, you covered uh, I'll Be Your Mirror uh, for the Velvets uh, mm. tribute. Um, I, I wanted to ask you about that, too. Uh, you know, like, I guess how you got roped into that and, and why that song? Yeah, I um, I got asked to be a part of the project, and then um, I picked that song. I just, I mean, I just, I love that song. I think it's, I think it's really special. And yeah, it was a fun, it was a fun project to be a part of. Maybe it was because I was thinking about it in that lens, but when I looked at your song, if I don't hear from you tonight, I started thinking about the Velvets, and that song stuck with you, and just. Just a little mm. bit of the DNA, you know, making its way in that one, at least is mm. what I heard. Yeah. I don't know if that would be out of the ordinary. Uh, Courtney Barnett, thank you. Congratulations on uh, this new album, Things Take Time, Take Time. It's always a pleasure to talk to you, and hopefully we'll see you uh, around the tour. Oh, thanks so much. It was really nice to talk to you. All right. Take care. Bye. You too. Bye-bye. Now, Courtney and I last caught up back in uh, 2018 to talk about the record, Tell Me How You Really Feel. I'm going to include that interview here as well, uh, as we also got to talk about our uh, our joyed uh, fandom of the breeders, Kim and Kelly Deal. This is part two of Kyle Meredith with Courtney Barnett. How are you? You know, living my best life listening to the songs from your new record, so how could I be any better? Sounds good. Tell Me How You Really Feel. You became famous for sort of the personal observations about very specific moments in life, but is it fair to say that this record is, is something bigger? Maybe. I mean, it still feels like very um, observational, kind of um, internal observations, maybe, a bit more. A bit more so than the journal and, um, you know, surroundings. I mean, I look at a, um, a song, well, like the first lead single with Nameless Fa Faceless. I mean, it's probably pretty obvious, you know, with all the conversations that are happening out there. Um, but was there one incident that that kind of spurred this one, that, that led you to that direction? No, that one, I think it's just, um, I think it's just an ongoing, just an ongoing incident and um, ongoing news and ongoing kind of death and, uh, you know, feeling unsafe. And I think it's just a conversation that I'm constantly having with friends and uh, you know, never quite understanding where the um, where the hatred and the violence comes from. I mean, you take something like that, and you know, with with everything that is happening, the incidents and and the conversations and the movements. I, I think I'd be surprised if you were an artist uh, or any artist who weren't figuring out how to filter this. That weren't being at least reflective. Uh, was it a challenge for you then, with all this going out, to figure out how to put that into some kind of lyrical poetry you know without um being obvious about it i guess i think i struggle with that sometimes because it's it's hard to kind of not sound too um you know didactic and preachy about things and because you know i'm just a songwriter i don't know anything everything all i can really express is my thoughts and feelings and you know reflections of of the world around me so and then it's hard i think that sometimes i i try to kind of um you know find find the positive in things and or sometimes kind of err on uh, sarcasm or kind of dark humor and sometimes that doesn't serve the topic because it might undermine it and it's it's a it's a strange balance you know I but I guess it's just a ongoing kind of learning curve but isn't it interesting then you know when you become a successful artist when you become, when you get a fan base that they do look to you for the answers in, in some way, you know, just because you have this pedestal, you know, uh, with a connection through music, uh, suddenly the eyes are looking towards you to say, okay, so what do we do? Yeah. Well, I don't, yeah, maybe, I don't know. A little, I think I'm so caught up in my own head, I don't, I don't realize that stuff sometimes. I think that's a nice uh, transition over the, to the, um, well, it's sort of a transition over to the, the newest single, which I saw the video, which, of course, you know, sort of shoots you out to space. 
and, uh, is 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 the yeah. meta? Should I be drawing the line for the metaphor? You know, as the spotlight gets on you, that this is um, some desire to escape a little bit. So funny that everyone finds the spotlight and the same angle, but it's it's smaller than that, I think, or bigger than that even. It's tricky because there's so many kind of angles in that song of friendships and relationship and and um, you know connections with people and and um, and with myself and. I think it's more just that general frustration and sadness and and just wanting to um you know get away from everything. If you take the take the angle of fame and whatever out of it, it's more just the world. <laughs> You'll probably have to excuse a lot of us for for looking at that because you know there was a little bit of a story with other interviews going into this about you know a bit of writer's block and and you know facing you know the the mountain that was before you with the last record you know certainly accomplished and then you know you're out there and you're I know you're... we can't we can't help we can't help the the stories <laughs> <laughs> that come <laughs> we love stories <laughs> I, I am going to continue down that path just a little bit and everything because, you know, you, you have spent the yeah. last little while playing in Jen's band, uh, which her record, oh, yeah. you know, one of my favorites of last year, too. And that was sort of a way to, you know, I don't know if you meant it in this way of all, if it just happened like that, but it's sort of a way to kind of get out there and keep playing but not have to be the front person. Like, is that weight taken off of you like that? Yeah, well, I guess it's definitely a different, um, yeah, totally different energy, which is um, which is good and refreshing, I think. But, it, I mean, it wasn't so, yeah, not as, as selfish as that sounds. It was more just, um, I played in Jen's band around the same time I released my, oh, when was it? Maybe my first kind of, my second EP or, so I've been playing with her for a while and I think it's, um, yeah, just kind of finding, finding that balance of, you know, things really took off for me and I was away for a long time and she was, um, Jen was writing her album and so, yeah, it was more just kind of finding the, the, the time to, to make that happen because I love, I love playing in her band so much. But yeah, I mean, it's definitely, I definitely don't have to sing or, <laughs> you know, lose my breath singing. <laughs> <laughs> Well, from a fan's point of view, uh, you know, it, it looks so interesting. The two of you being such accomplished songwriters, uh, writing albums that uh, uh, on some level feature messages about each each other. You know, and, and Jen talked a lot about that, what her record is about. You know, I had her mm. on the show and, and that was a big narrative point to hers. And I, I don't know if if any of this record, does does it have that? Does it kind of answer any of that from your side? Well, it does in some ways. I think... Um yeah, I think that I was so um, I was so caught up in my own world while I was writing this that I mean, yeah, there's definitely uh, bits that kind of I mean, they're not like call yeah call and response, but but um, there's definitely stuff that references Jen, but I mean, it's not like negative or whatever, but it's just um, yeah, I think it. I mean, she's you know the most important part of my life, so there's everything kind of revolves around her in some way but maybe not directly, you know. And it's it's strange it's a strange process because Jen inspires me so much when I'm writing and really <laughs> picks me uh picks me up off the ground when I'm when I'm really struggling. So, you know, I think a lot of um a lot of her gets ingrained in there even if it's not kind of if it's not too obvious. After you had done a um a record with Kurt Vile and she was open up, I mean the obvious question became yeah, but women with two of you doing record together. <laughs> well, yeah, we've been like working on songs together, but um, I don't know. Down the road, we've got our whole lives to do that. <laughs> <laughs> you know, at one part, you know, that she and I did talk about was everything that was going on with the uh, the Australian marriage thing, and I think they were taking the poll around that time. And you, you know, excuse me, I haven't caught a, uh, kept up, but what, what's been? Oh yeah, is there any news with that? Any positive movement? Yeah, so in November maybe, um, they the poll was counted or whatever and it was um and it was positive for like, I don't know, sixty five percent or something. But because it was just a poll and not a binding vote, it um you know, didn't really mean anything. But luckily the government decided to honor the people's choice and um they they passed the law in I don't know, December or January. It was a bit bittersweet because it was Obviously, a positive outcome, but um, gone about in a very ridiculous and um, right. offensive 
an expensive <laughs> way. So yeah, it was um, you know, whatever. It's over now, but yeah, I'm I'm glad the outcome, but it was it was a pretty stupid process. Well, congratulations on the positive side of that outcome. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And, you know, I can go back and watch because s somehow, you know, we keep having these parallels between the United States and Australia. Uh, and, and sometimes they're lined up in the same way about the big issues. And sometimes, like, you know, we talk about gun control a lot right now. And, and it almost seems like mm. every single time Australia is, is sort of referenced in that. Like, you know, this is what yeah. it, it could be or whatever. As an outsider, how, how caught up in the American politics do you get as, as someone who lives, you know, very far away, but spends a lot of time here. Yeah, I, I definitely the last couple of years, I mean, I think you can't not be, um, you know, involved or like, I think it's really strange that when I see comments when, you know, when not non-Americans comment on, you know, things and people are like, well, you're not even from here, so you've got no right to talk about it. But, but I think they do, everyone does. I mean, because a lot of that stuff affects everyone and it's, no one wants to see or feel or or just yeah see that suffering yeah. so uh yeah like i remember friends you know when when everyone was um was was in an uproar about the you know your latest election and and um they were like well, what is it it doesn't affect us he's not our president but it does affect everyone because <laughs> it you know he ruins people's lives people with any sort of heart or emotion can feel that so i think it affects everyone yeah. Well, don't listen to those people who say you don't deserve an opinion because I assure you, they all have an opinion about anything that's happening within a square mile yeah. of whatever you're doing. They they have an opinion and they'll yeah. they'll use it somewhere online. So. <laughs> <laughs> there's a, there's a word on this record. I think it's the uh, a title to the hopefulness, which you know yeah. I I keep toying around and flipping around in my head because I think I only read a little bit on it where it's it's actually sort of in a negative light but there's a lot of positivity out of it that's that's what i'm getting and i don't know is that is that anywhere near right because that's what i'm hoping yeah. you know is the outcome of all of this <laughs> yeah i think um you know i think that word kind of made itself up you know kind of struggle of um yeah of of, of feeling hope, hopeless and but wanting to be hopeful and you know that that real like push and pull between the two like you know, I think the the natural kind of reaction of 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 hopelessness is just there and 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 quite easy to kind of give into. I think it's harder to it's harder in a way to be hopeful and to be positive and to to actually um, engage in in kind of positive um, I don't know anything just any kind of fight or change or it's a whole different kind of level of energy and the kind of fear the feel to just give in to how how terrible everything is is so much easier and then you can be like well i told you it was terrible so <laughs> here we are just living in this terrible world but i don't know i i, I have faith that there's, there's enough good people if all the good people did good things then they would uh overshadow the bad people maybe i believe you uh, because i also want to believe you <laughs> because i need to believe that, exactly you know it's, it's exactly i mean <laughs> i don't know if i 100 percent believe that but i'm trying to believe that i think that's the, the key <laughs> yeah. well here's something positive hugely positive <laughs> on a very selfish note i think you have the breeders on your record and that's gotta be mind-blowing awesome positive, for you yeah. how'd that happen yeah it's awesome well, I met him a couple of years ago. Um, we did a podcast together, and um, Talk House podcast, and we became friends and, and and stayed in touch. And when I was in Ohio once, I, I caught her up, and they were in the studio, and we went in, and they needed some vocals on a song, so we jumped in a room and sung. And and then I guess like a year later, I was in the studio making my album, and and um, I think I was I was probably um, corresponding with Kim and. And she said, I owe you, I owe you some vocals. So I sent, you know, I sent the song over and Kim and Kelly sung some stuff on two songs. Teenage dreams really do come true. <laughs> yeah. Well, I, I don't think I discovered the breeders until like my early 20s. My friend Fee, she runs a, uh, she has a radio show in Melbourne. She loves them and she was always talking about them. And I think I kind of went, 
home one day and oh I was probably like oh yeah I, I love the breeders <laughs> <laughs> facing it and then I went home and listened to them and was like oh yeah I really do love the breeders so yeah it's a bit of a a late uh, discovery for me but I think it came at you know I think music always comes to you when it's supposed to right. and you need it somehow that's a perfect sentiment right there I'll wrap up by asking you about your t-shirt collection because you have to <laughs> how many band t-shirts do you have do you think that you have? You should ask Jen about my t-shirt collection. <laughs> oh, yeah? What, what's she going to um, say? There's too many. She thinks there's too many. Um, she's always trying to get me to... <laughs> yeah, I guess I have a lot. I can't I can't help it. I I guess I, I've always gone to so many shows and I buy the record and buy the t-shirt and sometimes I don't even want the t-shirt, but it's, it's like... I just like that support... You know, bands need the merch board so they can do their next thing. Well, I, I appreciate the bands but that you've turned me nice, on to. It's nice. To, oh, good. With your t-shirt collection and uh, and with everything you're doing over at Milk, I think it's I think it's really amazing what you're doing out there, and the music and this record. I love this record so much. So um, thank you so oh, much. Oh, thanks so much. Yeah, it's thank you nice. for the uh, the conversation today, and uh, and we'll see you in Louisville. You're going to be here at Forecastle this summer, so I can't wait. Yeah, can't wait. See you then. All right, take care. Bye. Now we'll turn the clocks all the way back to 2015, the first time I met Courtney. It was uh, backstage at Bonnaroo that year. Got to talk about her uh, songwriting process and arriving uh, onto the scene. So uh, here you go, part three and the conclusion of Kyle Meredith with Courtney Barnett. Thanks. Yeah, uh, it's. I, th- I think we're all become big fans here in the last couple of years, especially with the uh, the record. I would say the new record, but you're saying the first record properly. Whatever. I just say that it's my third release, really. Okay. So, all so right. Everyone has a different idea. Well, anyway, it's fantastic. <laughs> yeah. Uh, how are you dealing with all this, too? Are you, like, is, is the throat getting to you and everything? Are you having any of those issues playing night after night after night? Uh, yeah, kind of. Like, every, like, singing your guts out every night yeah. kind of wears your voice down a little bit. Because it doesn't seem like when you're, when you're deciding that you want to be... <laughs> a rock star <laughs> or whatever that you can, you can take that into account so now that you're out here it's almost yeah. like rolling with it in progress or yeah, I guess. something isn't it and I, I never like learned how to sing uh, properly obviously so um i don't know what i'm doing <laughs> i think that's why it works <laughs> yeah um yeah yeah it's good that's <laughs> all right do you read your reviews yeah sometimes do you read all the things do, do you take them to heart I mean, uh, people are only saying the nice things, by the way, so it seems like it'd be all right. Yeah, I, I, I kind of, um, I used to read everything, and then I, and then I got over it. I was like, yeah, because, yeah, I think for every like one bad review, you know, there's however many others, but the bad one. Hurts That's the, the one most. that sticks with you, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. So I just there's this line that I keep seeing when people talk about you, and 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 to me, it almost seems backhanded when they call you an unlikely success. And I, I get what they're saying, you know, you're not writing Nickelback songs, or thank God, or something like that. But but does does that, does that ever get to you when they're, so, oh, you're an unlikely success? Like, how could she have done this? The uh, world was against her. Yeah, no, I don't know. It's, I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> I think like one person starts saying something and then everyone says it. Um, it's lazy journalism. <laughs> that's what it is. I don't know. I just don't take it to heart, I guess. Yeah. I guess it's kind of a compliment, in a way. Yeah. Well, they're all cheering for you. Who knows? They're all, a lot of them, of course, they, they concentrate on your lyrics from the get-go. That's, that's the one thing that, the first thing that stands out with you. When you're writing those, when, I guess when you're done with those, do you ever see them as a punchline? Do you see your lyrics as a punchline, or is it always a serious story? Because, you know... Again, I, the way I can read it, it's almost like they're saying, these are so cute, and I laugh at these, you know. They're laughing at a hardship of you with an asthma problem or whatever, yeah. you know, and it becomes... Do you ever see it as a punchline, what you're writing? Um, Even unintentionally? No, nah, not not really a punchline. I think I think it's more just um, trying to find the humor in, like, in those worse, slightly worse situations than yeah. normal. Um, so I'm not really trying to be funny. I'm just kind of trying to be lighthearted. Right. Or, you know, trying to flip the situation around um, to get a kind of different perspective. So, um, yeah. <laughs> well, then with your lyrics, how hard do you work on them to, I guess, not be cliche? You don't have a song 
that says I love you four times in the chorus or something like that. And I'm generalizing, of course. Yeah. But, and that is something, that is something really unique about your songwriting. That what makes you, one of the things that makes you amazing is your style of lyrics. Do you have to work on them so hard? Does it ever get to you where you write something and you go, I can't sing that? Yeah. That's too simple. Or, or whatever it might be. Yeah, I, I write a lot, like I, I, I cull a lot out and um, I think it's good to do that anyway because yeah. you kind of, you just kind of spew ideas out and then and then you figure out what's good and I don't know I normally I have like a cringe rule you know if I if I cringe at any of my lyrics and they they gotta go because <laughs> chances are it'll only get worse. But what happens if it's like <laughs> this, the, the most catchiest thing that you've ever written? Does that matter? Does that factor into it? You're like, oh, that's so that's so corny, but. Well, yeah, I guess bits of passion are best for like that, which, but I think. I think you just gotta take it as it comes. Like I, when I wrote the chorus for that song, I was like, "This is pretty dumb." Yeah. But um. But it stands out so good. You know? Yeah. It's, well. It's, yeah. I don't know. Maybe it's the uh, the the belief behind it. Yeah. Yeah. Dead Fox is of course a really strong song, and you're getting into worldly issues on this. Um, I don't know, in, environmental issues. I, I yeah. guess is what's going on there. Can you see yourself writing more like that? Uh, calling certain things out, do you, are you, do you do that to try to draw the attention or is this just what's on your mind because I mean I think it's great that you're doing it so yeah. I'm kind of hoping for more as yeah. a fan. I think um, it's um, I guess it's kind of intentional but not like uh, you know didactic to try and tell people what to do or what to think. I think that um, I've always kind of, it's just stuff that I think about, so it, it ends up in the songs and, um, you know, most of my songs I think um, I pass on like some sort of kind of like-minded kind of right. general message, um, maybe subtle, but but yeah, it'll definitely, um, that's the kind of person I am, yeah. so. I mean, you, you know, could get to that point where, where, where you see something in the world that you are so angry at, whether it be political or, or not, that you have that opportunity. I mean, yeah. and so many artists, the greatest rock songs of all time, have you know touched upon that stuff. And you know, yeah. and you have to make that decision. Like, do I say that to a fan base who might not agree with me, or or do I keep it to myself? Yeah. Well, I think you should say what you believe in. Yeah. Um, but I don't say it because I have some sort of position. Of There's power. no agenda. Yeah. Yeah. I don't like. I don't think I have that position. I think that. My songs are still quite personal, so all I'm doing is passing along a personal, um, you know, message, and people take it however they take it. Hopefully, you know, hopefully it um, touches some people who don't think that way, or right. you know what I mean. Like, hopefully, it it subtly changes some people's uh, perspectives on the world. You ever think about doing another kind of writing books? Something like that, yeah. another style of writing. Are you are you going to try tackle that? Yeah, oh, I write I like write heaps of um, short stories and stuff. So I take heaps of photos and draw heaps of pictures. Right. So. I mean, you, you're always with the camera. You, I'm glad you found it. You lost it the other day. Yeah, so. <laughs> that's, that's nice. Well, I didn't. I thought I lost it. Yeah, but it was just. I mean, even yeah. like a photo book. I, I I wonder if that's on the way. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, years down the track, you got to sure. collect the photos. Keep yourself interested in this whole game. Yeah. Yeah. All right, Courtney, it is so great to talk to you. Cheers. I really appreciate it. And congratulations on the new record. Thank you. Record number three. All right. <laughs> and my thanks again to Courtney Barnett. The new record is called Things Take Time, Take Time. Big old thanks to you as well for checking out the uh, the episode and the series. Hit that subscribe button before you get out of here so you can keep up with all the interviews that we put out. A new one every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at all the usual spots like iTunes, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Acast, Podchaser, NPR, YouTube for the video versions, or anywhere you like to get your podcast from. Subscribe to Kyle Meredith with. After that, head over to WFPK.org. It's where I do a show Monday through Friday, 6 p.m. Eastern, an hour full of song premieres. Music news, anniversary spins, bonus interviews, Monday through Friday, 6 p.m. Eastern at WFPK.org. Consequence has your music and film news. You can also find me on the social media spots. That's uh, Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, all three of them, at Kyle Meredith. I do hope you like and follow along. That does it for another edition. I'm Kyle Meredith. I'll see you next time.
Consequence Podcast Network. <laughs> I think it's for, for the best. It's easy to hear your favorite artist on WFPK from wherever you are. Listen on your smart speaker, live stream from our website at WFPK.org, from Louisville Public Media.